Well, there's an interesting problem at the moment, which is that the government doesn't seem to have joined up thinking on this issue. Right, Michael Gove, the Education Secretary, appears to repeatedly make the case that something like Middlemarch is inherently valuable and that it should be taught in schools and that the Twilight series isn't, uh, of, of teenage novels about sexy vampires. Um, although, I remember about five years ago, Michael Gove did write a piece for, the, for one of the broadsheets about what a great writer he thought um, Dennis Wheatley was, who wrote similar sorts of novels to those vampire novels in the 50s. So, you know, but I, so I, I, the part of me suspects that he's only invoking Middlemarch to annoy teachers who can't teach it because it's 900 pages long and a teenager won't read that. But I think he, uh, part of me thinks that he's using it as a stick to discredit, to bash teachers, to discredit education so that he can move private firms into running schools. But part of me thinks that it might be that he actually does believe that culture has an inherent value. And given that he was educated in Oxford, one would hope that he would have some feeling for it. But on the other hand, the culture secretary, Maria Miller, four weeks ago, specifically made an astonishing speech that managed to unite Marxist 1970s intellectuals and right-wing theatre critics from the Daily Mail like Quentin Letts in disliking it, in, where, where she said that the people involved in creating culture, if, if, particularly if they expected any form of subsidy, had to look at the uh, economic values of it, the implication being that we're all a terrible drain on the system, wasting everyone's time with our stupid ideas. Um, but the, the, the great response to that was that the uh, various arts bigwigs came back and proved demonstrably that for every pound you invest in the arts, you get a, a, a four times a return. Uh, because someone that's trained to do design at a national theatre on a subsidised job ends up doing it for Skyfall, the Bond film, that um, then makes millions for Britain. The problem with that is you've, you've then engaged in their argument, right? Their argument being that you only justify culture by, um, by, its, by its financial uh, repercussions. Um, the, uh, where I would come at that argument, which I did, when, when they were threatening to cut funds for Battersea Arts Centre, which has saved my career, really, because I could work there without being charged for space. Um, the Art, Battersea Arts Centre justified itself by talking about the productions that had gone through it or the writers that had gone through it that had ended up making a lot of money for the country. Whereas I said, what they should have done is said, but we also put on the Bowman Brothers, who are abstract sound artists who bubble water through pipes, whose work has no commercial value whatsoever, but is clearly inherently valuable. Although weirdly, 10 years down the line, the Bowman Brothers are a key part of the soundscape of the Barbarian Sound Studio film, which has just been nominated for Oscars and Academy Awards and BAFTAs and whatever. So there's something that looks utterly pointless, right? Abstract sound art done by men that appear to be insane. But <laughs> t 10 years down the line, it ends up actually, it's probably covered, it's probably, whatever Battersea Arts Centre spent on giving them a room free for two years on a Sunday night, it's covered in an instant by that film, right? But the, it's rather like pure research, right? Pure research into, in science into a subject which is of inherent interest may have a commercial byproduct, but nothing's ever really va achieved by pursuing that commercial product. It's the same with arts and culture. Nothing any good is ever written with a view to making money, really. You have to believe in what you want to do. And, um, and if you can work with um, existing concepts and bring something else to them, then great. But the things that set out, I, I think, like the Spice Girls musical. It's obviously not going to be any good, is it? Right? In a, in a, um, and, and, unless you allow someone to really mess with it. You know? uh, or, um, or, yeah, so I think that the, the valuable things in culture come out as a, of a byproduct of it. And that's why a course like the humanities courses in universities are under terrible threat because they can't prove on paper a, a, an exact um, result for the, the culture. But weirdly, on the writer's day here, there are all sorts of people whose input to the culture is obviously valuable, either intellectually or financially, but it shouldn't be justified financially. But it's an awful dialogue, that we've, awkward dialogue we're having at the moment, in which in the government, Maria Miller, the culture secretary, and Michael Gove, the education secretary, seem to be taking opposing positions, but no one seems to have joined the dots on this. So, uh, anything else? Yeah.